most useful things I've done with my iPad over the past year or so, or maybe even a little bit longer now, is to set up different home screens for different use cases. I've always found the iPad a bit of a distraction machine. There's always an app to check and there's always a notification to respond to. And using these different focus modes really helps when I need to get some proper work done, or if I'm doing some research, or if I want to just settle down with some games or things like that. I've been using a shortcut widget, which is on all of my home screens, which helps me do this. This lets me jump between my general home screen, which has all the apps that I need to access kind of all the time. It's got a productivity screen, which is fantastic for all of my work related things. I've also got a gaming one, which I don't really use so much anymore, but it's still on there and it's still really nice. And I also have an iPad control one, which means when I connect my iPad to an external monitor to use stage manager, this just gives me loads of glanceable information while I've got this connected up to an external monitor. I've even got it now. So every time I rotate into a different focus mode, the wallpaper changes as well, which I really, really like. You may have seen me use this a lot in previous videos, but back then it was really tricky to set up. and I only had a small tutorial, but in this video, thanks to iPad 17 as well, it's way, way easier and I'm going to run you through the entire thing. Please bear in mind as well, you need the iPad OS 17 beta at the moment, but the official release of that is literally in a few days time. So if you don't have it right now, you will soon and then it will make sense. This won't work on earlier versions of iPad OS. And of course, if you do like the wallpapers that are on the iPad at the moment, this is a set of my own. This is a collaboration with Knoopsie called Elemental. If you wanna check them out and help support the channel, I'll link them below. Before we do though, I did want to talk about the sponsor of this video, Bandwork. Bandwork are a high quality Apple Watch band maker with a dedicated focus on using the best materials and craftsmanship while keeping their prices as fair as possible. And I'm actually really happy to admit I've only been using the standard Apple Watch bands with my Apple Watch since well, pretty much forever, but since switching to this G1A metal band from Bandwork, I think I'm a total convert. This strap is really gorgeous and the black metal flows seamlessly into my Apple Watch. It's a really nice effect. I mostly consider the Apple Watch to look sporty, so I don't really wear it to specific places or events, but with this strap, it's a really nice in-between, keeping the functionality while looking more professional at the same time. They also sent me the Honolulu strap in beige, and it's a stunner too, and adds another look to the watch I've been ignoring for such a long time. What's also nice is you can pick the colors of the clasp and the adapters, so you can get the right look for your Apple Watch as well. It's also nice to know that most of Bandwork straps are handmade in Germany, by people who genuinely care about the product. So if you want to add a little something to your Apple Watch, then check them out at the link in the description below. And a huge thanks goes out to Bandwork for sponsoring this video. All right, let's get started. So the first thing you're gonna to need to do is to set up each one of your different home screens. And don't worry, this is really easy. Just hold your finger on the iPad so it enters into jiggle mode, swipe once to the right, and then start making all of your different home screens. If you're not sure which sort of things to make, it might be good to have one for work, one for gaming. Maybe if you've got kids, it's worth setting up a mode for that. So it's just kid-based apps on an iPad or anything else that kind of comes to mind. The only thing I really recommend you have is making sure you've got the shortcuts widget on each one of your home screens as well. This will make switching between them really, really easily. To add this, go back into jiggle mode, go to the top left where you can add a widget, press the little plus button there, and then scroll down until you see the shortcuts one. And then you just want to scroll over until you see the one which has got four buttons on it. Make sure you've got that added into each one of your home screens. If you really don't like that widget and don't want it on there, you can go to control center at the top right and then tap into which focus mode that you want to go into. But I would honestly recommend not doing that and having it on the home screen. It just makes the whole thing way easier. I really recommend setting up a home screen for just general use as well. So this would just be your main one that you have when you come into the iPad. Then you've always got one which you can come home to if you ever get lost or stuck or anything like that. It just kind of resets the entire experience. It's really, really useful. It's worth having. After you've made all of your home screens, the next thing you're gonna to want to do is hide them. So to do this, enter into jiggle mode again, press the little page icon on top of the dot, then you'll be greeted with a screen where you can select and deselect any pages that you've just made. I like to hide all these on my general one. You can kind of pick what you'd like to see, but for this to work kind of nicely and properly, I recommend hiding all of them apart from your general one here. Next up, we need to make sure the wallpaper changes each time that you enter a different focus mode. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, if you wanna keep your wallpaper consistent, but I find it's like a really nice kind of visual cue that you're in a different mode, so I'd recommend setting it up. To do this, it's just basically setting up a new wallpaper, so it's really easy. If you go to your lock screen, hold your finger on the iPad, 
and then swipe and make as many lock screens as you like, each with that different wallpaper which is going to relate to your focus mode. You can even change the widgets on the side here and the style of clock. So for my gaming one, I've got some more battery level things on the side and the clock looks a little bit more gamer. And I've done something similar for my productivity setup as well, which includes a to-do list and the news and other little things like that. It's worth spending some time here to make them look really nice. Just make sure you've got one of these for each of your focus modes. And then after that, jump back to the home screen. Moving on from there, we're going to need to set up the focus modes in settings so your iPad has something to jump to each time. So head into the settings app and on the left hand side, scroll down until you see focus. Tap that and the first thing you're going to want to do here is untick the section which says share between devices. If you don't, every time you change something on your iPad, it will change on your phone and your Mac and everything else. It's really, really frustrating. So just make sure that one's turned off before you get started. We're going to want to set up a focus mode for each of the home screens we've made. So go to the top right where you see a little plus and hit that. Your iPad will then give you some suggestions of ones you can use. You can hit one of those if you'd like to, or you can just press create custom and go from there. I'm going to create a custom one, so hit custom and then pick an icon and color which kind of makes sense and you should be able to name it here too. You'll then be brought into the customization area for your focus mode and by default it silences notifications and things like that, but you can allow some apps and some people through. So if you want to do that, you can press here at the top and then change around what you need to. But the most important thing for us here is the customize screens menu. First up, if you pick the lock screen that you want first to relate to this focus mode. So if I'm making a productivity one, for instance, I know that that's the green lock screen. So I'm going to press the green lock screen and then I'm going to press the one on the right and that's going to let me pick which home screen show up. So I'm going to pick the productivity one that I made, but you can select any one here that you've made that you want to relate to this home screen. That's the main thing you need to do. There are some other options you can play around with, but after you've done that, you need to do exactly the same thing for each one of your other focus modes. Moving on, and you'll be happy there's not much longer to go now, we need to set up the shortcut widget so you can press that button and switch between all these focus modes really quickly. And luckily, it's nice and easy to do. To do this, you're going to want to go into your shortcuts app. That should be on your iPad already, but if you can't find it, swipe down and type in shortcuts and it should be the first one that pops up. At the top right of the screen near the search bar, you're going to see a little plus icon. If you tap that one, it will let you create a new shortcut. And off the bat, this screen will look really scary and complicated, but honestly, there's not much to it. It's nice and simple to use. When you're in there, on the right hand side, there's a little search bar. If you type into there focus, you'll see something on the right pop up called set focus mode. And all you need to do is tap that. You'll see it pop up to the top of the screen there. And all you want to do is where it says do not disturb, tap that and change that to one of the new focus modes you've just made. After you've selected your focus mode, if you tap the little off button next to it, it will say on until turned off. That's all you need to do. Once you've done that, you can rename the focus thing to your new focus mode, which you should absolutely do. So tap that at the top left and then you can rename it. And you can also give it an icon and a color, which is totally worth doing. Once you're back on this screen, you need to go back to that plus menu and do the same thing for each of your other focus modes. So by the end of it, you should have something which looks like this. Finally, while we're in the shortcuts app, there's one more button we need to set up and this is going to be a home one. This will deactivate all of your focus modes and bring your iPad back to that standard home screen for general everyday use. This is going to be a similar process as before. So press that plus icon. And then once again, on the right hand side, type in focus and then press the option for set focus. And then once that pops up to the top of the screen, we're just gonna to wanna to make sure that it turns off every single focus. So to do this, tap do not disturb again and change that to one of your focus ones and change it to off. So you should be able to just leave it. And then you should be able to add this again for each one of your focus modes. I recommend doing this for every single focus mode just so you can turn them all off at once. And again, once you're done, it should look something like this. And the last command we're going to need to give this home button is to bring us right back home after turning off all of those focus icons. So in the search bar again, type in set wallpaper and it should pop up down the bottom here. Tap that and then set your general home screen for your standard iPad use. You'll want to name this final shortcut home and give it a nice icon and color as well. And then going back to your shortcuts home screen, it should look something like this. Okay, so now we should be completely sorted with the entire thing. And you'll find that your shortcuts widget on your home screens is now populated with those buttons. So you should be able to jump between all of your new focus modes nice and easily. Now, if you're setting up more focus modes than three or four and you want more options, you can make a bigger widget and do the same process again, and just have a larger widget on each of your home screens. But for me, I like to keep it nice and simple. And just to jump between these three modes, 
I found really, really useful. There is a ton of flexibility in this. So if you found an easier way of doing it, or if you found something else which is really, really useful that kind of should be built into this, do let us know in the comments below because it's always good to learn new stuff while I'm making these videos. But there you have it. You should now be able to have a fully professional, completely customized home screen experience for your iPad, which should completely speed up your use. It's helped me loads. It's actually let me get a lot more work done on my iPad and hopefully it will for you as well. I've got loads of other iPad related videos on this channel. So if you wanna check them out, I'll link loads below, but check out the rest of the channel too. And as always, I'll see you all in the next one.